Okay, so hello. Uh, I'm Dimitri Ivanov, part of the core team, and I'm going to be talking about hyperchains. Okay. So, uh, the talk is going to follow the, this flow. Basically, there will be a short intro, so I want to put you into the right context. Then I'll make a short description of what hyperchains are and the problems they're solving, and then dive into uh, deeper details. So, the intro. Uh, people usually use uh, internet as a metaphor how the blockchain is moving. Uh, I'm a bit tired of that. So instead, we're going to be talking about cars. Uh, this is the first car ever produced uh, by Carl Benz uh, in 1886. And it was driving up to 16 kilometers per hour, and this is important for a bit. Uh, this is how uh, engines evolved. So early 1800s, uh, there was the steam power. Uh, then there was a rapid improvement of how engines work, uh, and eventually we get to something that we could recognize as a car. Uh, there are two really important things here. Uh, first is that it took less than 100 years to get to something that we would recognize. And before that, well, it was horses all the way back to the point where we tamed horses. Uh, before we, get an, we got an engine, we actually were using wind, water, and horse and human power. Uh, so, um, once cars were introduced, there was a lot of uncertainty, fear, doubt. People were afraid that uh, basically, if you go above certain speed, your heart's going to stop. Uh, People were screaming at cars on the streets and uh, didn't know what to do with that. And the first car, uh, that was uh, up to 16 kilometers per hour, and the horse can go above 50. So the car was really ugly, slow horse. And why I'm saying this? Um, so far you have only seen horses. And now we're talking about uh, hyperchains. And hyperchains are a really big step forward. And this is only the first of four talks. Uh, I'm going to tell you what a hyperchain is. So in the car metaphor, I'm going to sketch what a car is, uh, but I'm not going to dive into details. Uh, then uh, Fabian is going to tell you what the car engine looks like. Uh, Metin is going to tell you how to build your own car and uh, how to set it up and drive it. And uh, I think at four o'clock, Jan is going to tell you <laughs> the more interesting thing, like what do you use the car for? Uh, what can you build with that? Um, I want to mention something really important. Cars are not a full replacement of horses. So once cars were introduced and people loved cars, uh, they decided that uh, they can do anything with them. And there is this game Poe, where people are riding horses. And they tried uh, making an uh, auto Poe, where you drive a car and hit a ball. And it turned out to be a really bad idea. So hyperchains are not going to solve everything. They're not a silver bullet. And if you want to do something really dangerous that is strongly advised against, you still can, but you might hit a wall. So uh, hyperchains. Um, the hyperchains is a consensus mechanism for electing leaders. Uh, like, uh, there are a lot of different approaches. Uh, you all know proof of work. Another class is uh, proof of stake. And they all have different uh, drawbacks. And uh, they all have different uh, perks, if you want to. Uh, the goal of hyperchains is to be able everyone to spawn their own unique uh, custom built uh, chain. And if you were using uh, proof of work, that would require that you have to attract miners. And attracting miners for a small chain is not impossible, but uh, basically you have to, the chain has to compensate miners for their effort. And this would mean higher miner rewards, and uh, it's not a simple problem to, to be solved, especially if you want everyone to be able to spawn many different chains. And to make them work together. Uh, proof of stake has different problems. Uh, it can de deteriorate to 
proof of work essentially with stake grinding and there are long range attacks, so it's still suboptimal. Uh, what we're introducing now is hyperchains and it is a hybrid between proof of stake and proof of work. Uh, all hybrids are not 50-50, but rather they have, uh, they're either proof of work with a proof of stake component or vice versa. In our case, it's a proof of stake, delegated proof of stake with a really strong proof of work component. It's basically a way of uh, snapshotting of uh, hyperchain state on another chain. So basically you take a piece of really important information that identifies the chain and put it to another chain that, it, that has uh, quite some security. That's how the Chao chain derives its security from the parent chain. And I think I'm a bit ahead of time because I haven't told you what the Chao chain is. Uh, the point is that it's, uh, it allows you to have a, your own custom network that solves your particular need. So, what a Chao chain is? This is a hyperchain. Uh, it's a delegated proof of stake chain uh, that uses another chain to get its security. Uh, so, you don't have to attract a lot of miners. And if, you, if it were a pure uh, proof of stake, basically you'd be in full control of the, of the chain. So that's not good. Uh, imagine the case I have a coffee shop and I have a a mine, my own chain and I can do whatever it is if I'm the only staker. I can rewrite history. Uh, you cannot do that with hyperchains. We'll dive into that a bit shortly. Uh, what is really good about our implementation is it, it is quite pluggable. Uh, we have a series of uh, smart contracts that define the consensus. They're written in Sophia. And uh, you can tweak them, change them, modify them according to your particular needs. But that will be for Fabian, Fabian to explain. Um, we also have a parent chain uh, that is uh, another chain, Eternity. Uh, Bitcoin or whatever. Uh, it, it should be proof of work or another hyperchain. So you can have a hyperchain that is being used by another hyperchain as a parent chain. And uh, you can have hyperchains at hyperchains and hyperchains. So this scales really good. Um, the point is that uh, the outer parent chain uh, should be a proof of work. So all the security that's derived, it's derived uh, to all child chains, and, but we still need to have a really secure parent chain to start with. If we don't have that, uh, then the security that the child chains derive would be, well, small. Uh, the parent chain is being used as a secure ledger, so basically we spend uh, certain, sent certain events on that parent chain, and uh, we expect that those events are there finalized soonish. Uh, those events are ordered for us, so we get a strict order of events that are important for us. It is really important that the parent chain has no idea what those events are. They are simply hashes. So the parent chain has no knowledge of the chow chain. Uh, it cannot censor it. So it's simply receiving transactions and it has no internal knowledge what those transactions represent. Uh, we're going to be mentioning a couple of different roles. Um, in proof of work context, uh, a miner produces a block. And uh, in proof of stake, yeah. Uh, so basically in the Bitcoin NG context, uh, we have generations and the generation leader, leader. The leader is that the one that produces a key block and the following micro blocks. And what we want to achieve with hyperchains is uh, deterministically elect a new leader. And who can be a leader? Uh, we have, I already told you that it's a delegated proof of stake, so we have validators who stake, and there are certain conditions to be met for you to become a staker. Not everyone can become a staker. And uh, those conditions are defined in a smart contract. You can change that contract if you want to. Uh, we had provide certain defaults. Uh, you can change that, those as well. Uh, our current testnet, hyperchains testnet, uh, I think it requires one million hyperchain coins to become a staker. 
it's a number. You can set it up down as, as down as zero. Uh, but if you cannot become a staker, you can uh, support an existing staker. Then you provide, your, you delegate uh, your uh, proof of stake, uh, your staking power, uh, the amount of coins you have represent your staking power. So you delegate your staking power to existing delegate and thus you increase its uh, stake. Uh, the higher your stake you have, the higher the chance you are elected of becoming the generation leader. Okay, so now we go a bit deeper. Uh, so, this is the whole election cycle process. Uh, basically we have uh, three steps. Uh, this is a quite simplified version and I'm not going to cover any of the attack vectors, the edge cases and etc. So we have a parent chain in green and a chow chain. So everything starts when there is a new block collected on the chow chain. Uh, the bright purple one. Uh, then uh, all validators see that uh, they get its hash and they produce transactions. So we have currently three, oh, I'm, I think I missed the slide, yeah. Okay, sorry, uh, I missed the slide. Uh, so everything starts with validator pools. Uh, so the validators we were discussing, uh, they, every one of them has a pool and every delegate that joins their pool increases the total pi. And then we get to the, with the blocks. And once there is a block on the, Chow chain, we produce uh, the transactions. And uh, all validators that are online, they produce a transaction signaling uh, how they see the chain. So imagine there is a small fork on the Chow chain, and we have two different uh, blocks being produced on, on the Chow chain, not just one. Uh, then some of the validators are going to be producing uh, transactions with one hash, and the others are going to be producing transactions with the other hash and all those transactions that we call commitments uh, would end up on the parent chain. And uh, basically we're using the parent chain as a platform for vo voting. Basically every validator votes for a certain hash. Uh, basically I'm saying I see this hash to be the latest one. I see this one and uh, then we can uh, collect all the votes. Uh, so once transactions are sent to the parent chain, they're eventually included in a block on the parent chain. And those, uh, and this actually gives us everything we need uh, to do the election. Uh, this is an example of uh, elect function. Again, it's in Sofia. Uh, it has two arguments. The first one is the hash of the parent chain, uh, the parent chain block. And we use that as a source of entropy. And uh, we have the list of who staked and who staked what. Uh, the whole logic uh, of how we do that, how we elect the leader is in the smart contract. So if you want something more exotic, you can do that. But what would be our approach is uh, every, okay, so a little detail. Um, there is a mapping between uh, parent chain address and chow chain address, so we know who corresponds to whom. So if Alice uh, makes a commitment on the parent chain, we know that it was Alice address, and we can map that to the Alice taking pool on the Chow chain. And uh, so basically at this point we have who staked what, and we have the source of entropy, we have uh, who has, uh, how much staking power has each one of them. And we put them in one big bag, and using the source of entropy, uh, we pick one, and that's fully deterministic. And we have a new leader. At this point, the new leader produces a new block on the Chow chain, and the whole election cycle starts over again. And this is a really, really simplified version. Uh, and there are a lot of moving parts. For example, what happens if uh, the elected leader doesn't produce a block? Uh, who shall produce a block then? And there are a lot of... Uh, exploration points still. Uh, as again, uh, Jan is going to dive deeper into that, uh, how we, what you can use hyperchains for. 
Uh, initially, I was thinking about putting uh, Formula One cars here, but since uh, Formula One cars look really a lot like each other, and uh, hyperchains can come in every form and shape, uh, various cars seems better. So, uh, as a really broad uh, grouping, uh, we can have small networks like your company accounting. You, you can have your accounting fully transparent uh, for anyone to check. And uh, I'm talking usually for about moving the, our dev team's uh, project management into a hyperchain. So everyone can check that. Uh, everyone can see that we didn't roll back anything. Uh, so those are examples for small networks that you really don't expect attracting miners joining your uh, chain, and you don't have to. You don't have to be spending uh, so much electricity just for a trustless project management system. Uh, examples for big networks uh, would be providing platform for other hyperchains. So. If the hyperchain is attached, let's say, to Bitcoin, the fees are going to be expensive. Um, but if enough hyperchains are attached to that hyperchain and thus derive the Bitcoin security, uh, this could be a viable business project, uh, basically providing enough uh, fees for the, well, the top layer hyperchain. So they can, so its stakers can provide uh, security derived security from Bitcoin. And uh, we are discussing uh, proof of concept example with the document store, but uh, I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about yet. Uh, still, uh, auto power is not a good idea. The Bitcoin is, uh, hyperchains is not a silver bullet. You can still shoot yourself in the foot. And if you're wondering what this is, this is what Dali thinks about uh, people playing with cars and this horse in particular is particularly messed up so hyperchains are not going to solve all your problems for example it doesn't impact uh, the storage problem if you're putting a lot and uh, big fi files on the blockchain it, you're going to be ending in a dangerous area so that's it questions